Okay, so in this video I'll uh, just run through the process for setting up um, and using the Greeble modifier or plugin. Um, so first you need to go to uh, this website um, and download the latest version for whatever um, version of Macs you're using. So in this case I'm using 2017 so I would download it from here. Um, that'll give you a DLM file um, and when you're working in the labs um, at uni you'll need to do this process. At home you can just drag that into your um, C programs, Autodesk, 3ds Max um, slash plugins folder. Um, if you're working at uni you need to um, go into customize uh, system configure system paths um, and this is where Mac sort of looks by default for macros and stuff and then third-party uh, plugins and you'll need to tell it where to look for um, that Greeble so in this case I use um, uh, I put my plugins for 2017 in this folder here um, and you just add and navigate through um, then the easiest way is to just restart Max, um, and then you'll have uh, you'll have the Greeble plugin installed, and it'll tell you if there's any problems as you load it up. Um, so to get to that um, to the Greeble plugin modifier, um, you just make a box. Actually, we'll make a. Let's do a regular sphere and I'll do another sphere that kind of intersects um, like so. So to get to the Greeble we go across to the modifier panel um, and we can just type G um, and there's Greeble. Um, you've got a few parameters you can tinker with in here so minimum and maximum height. Um, can adjust the taper um, so it's more kind of pyramidy or less. Um, you also have material IDs and we'll talk about this in more detail in the future. Um, select tops can be quite useful um, and then you've got the widgets which are these guys on top. Um, you can adjust the size of those um, so you get this sort of variety. Um, also the number of them so you can adjust the density. To do a kind of Death Starry type model um, this is using the uh, Boolean um, process which is actually found under create and it's instead of standard primitives it's a compound object um, and I still tend to use the Pro Boolean um, pretty flexible. Um, so we want to subtract, use subtraction, so I'll just start picking and I'll subtract that guy. Um, so now I have the large sphere with a smaller sphere subtracted. If I go across to the modify panel, um, can actually adjust the operands. Um, so if I wanted to adjust where that sphere is being subtracted, or if I go to this guy, um, you know, we can adjust where that uh, sphere is. You can also go down to the sphere and adjust how many segments. Um, so if you wanted to kind of match them uh, roughly in terms of sort of level of detail, you know, Greeble, so, uh, closer. And then you can greeble all of that guy um, and, and adjust the amount um, until it's looking suitably death starry. Um, the other thing that you can do if you wanted to have a, 
don't know, like a run that's not um, covered, um, where you might put some sort of exhaust port, for example. Um, you might go down, well, turn the greeble off temporarily, um, and we'll do an edit poly. Uh, okay, so we can go in and I'll just zoom into here, select one, and then if we hold down shift when we're on select objects, it should select a loop. Um, and then should be able to invert that selection. Um, if I can remember how to invert a selection. I think it's under select, select inverse. And then you can turn your greeble back on and then you've got a you know, bit of a gap. swing fighter down to hit the exhaust port. Okay, so that's um, Greeble and the I guess the other thing you can do with Greeble it's probably more suitable for urban design is um, if you've got a plane um, and we've got uh, 20 segments, um, if we did a, an edit poly on that, um, I'll select all, um, and then I'll just deselect holding down alt, um, I'll do this in a top view. So alt, and then I'll just knock out some streets. Like so. Uh, then if we did the rebel onto this, um, and we don't want any taper. Um, and then that's sort of a very quick way of generating some, some sort of urban form. Um, if we wanted to ha have a kind of lower level that was retail, we could turn off widgets, um, make the minimum and maximum a bit closer together. So let's do uh, six and eight. So there you can see they're pretty similar. Um, and eight, um, so a kind of reasonable variation for, say, a retail level. Then if we have uh, put select tops on, um, and we did another greeble on top of that, um, and let's just adjust that to zero height, and we can bump that up a bit. Um, you can see that we've got something a bit more um, New York City kind of feeling. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff you can do with the material IDs. Um, so, and I might just attempt to show you. So if, if you've got um, Greeble, the first Greeble, you can set the material ID. Um, and and I'll just, uh, I mean, we'll, we'll do materials in a more, um, ordered fashion, but um, if we did a uh, multi-sub-object material, and we'll keep it reasonably simple, I think let's just do, let's just do two. So let's set the number to three. Um, so I'll just copy 
bring that across. So we've got three materials. Um, the first material will make that bright red. The second material will make that purple. And the third one will make that green. We'll apply that material to this object. And you can see the um, sort of lift overruns um, stuff up the top um, is currently purple because it must be set to that um, that number. So what we can do is in the modifier stack we can change these numbers. So the first bit of panelling that can be set to two, um, or let's yeah let's set that to two. Um, then if we go up to the greeble, the second greeble, we can set that material to uh, three. And the widgets, we could set that to one. Um, and, and then you could develop up those materials to have you know, facade type stuff on them as well.